Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video for Channel 3 No Drafts. I have the sunny uh, sunshine, sunny sunshine of Cyprus, uh, the bright, bright sun, sunshine of Cyprus, I should say, coming in through my window. So it's, it's a bit hard to see me on the camera, but as the sun sets, I think the picture is going to become a little bit better. I get the stream from uh, Limassol today. Very happy about being here. Weather is much nicer than in Moscow, so. Okay, uh, this is a windmill slam, A tier busted rare. What it does is you deal four <laughs> among any number of targets, so you can easily kill two creatures. You can tap two permanents. Okay, that's not that relevant. You also get to create a four-four creature and draw two cards, and you can discard and then get it back with uh, with the one one five spirit. The Dwarf Spirit, Slam Dunk, first pick. I mean, this is a mythic of mythics, as far as limited is concerned, of course. Okay, so we followed it up with a very strong uh, card, Express Expressive Federation. This lets you play lands, right? So the big difference between cast and play is that when a card lets you play the top, one of the top three, that's amazing. Exiling another one uh, also actually counts for some other cards that care about how many instants and sorceries you have in exile. So if you do have to, so if it's not a big difference for you, then you're better off exiling a, an instant and sorcery. Just make sure you have that effect in your deck. I don't remember exactly what that card was called. Um, I think it's a, it might be, yeah, it's the other side of, uh, might be one of those dual rare cards. If I see it, then I'll say something. Bury in books is excellent. Another important thing is this deck really doesn't care about its creature count. I mean, you can play three creatures, you can play like nine creatures. It's not really gonna make a huge difference. And if you are playing creatures, you might as well play creatures that help you power out your uh, your stronger stuff. Like the difference between casting this on turn seven versus eight is huge off Spectacle Mage. And this is not the only creature that um, that can give you discounts on your spells. Okay. Yeah, so now I'm just gonna take Elemental Masterpiece. Normally I would draft the cheaper cards, but this format is overpowered. And I wanna make sure, I wanna make sure that I have enough top end stuff. Okay, I mean, this is really a no-brainer. Uh, we take the dual land. I value these very highly. I don't want more than two, to be honest, because by the time you can really start using it, uh, you're close to being halfway through your deck. So on average, you're, you're bound to find one of them. And then putting the third one, I think, on balance, you just don't want to have, you don't, you don't want to be playing too many tap lands. I guess three is okay if you're running 17 lands, but Two, I feel, is uh, optimal for these. Especially if a deck has card draw, and this has access to quite a bit of card draw. Speaking of card draw, this is an excellent card. Very good enabler. We should note that the cards in our colors are drying up a little bit. I'm going to take the Historian... It's a clunky, in fact, I'm going to take the historian over the lesson. I saw that there was a lesson there, but for us to get to our late game, we want to make sure that we have enough early stuff. And I found that, um, first of all, the, the there's not that many two, like one and two drop creatures. And uh, they're, they're priced quite highly. So you don't want to get too greedy and just get, you know, end up being run over by, by an early aggressive deck. This is an excellent enabler in our deck. Again, it's gonna help us power out some of the more expensive car cards earlier, which it's gonna matter for a lot.
Mm. Maybe we end up with some red spirits to where this could be better than the wall. And we have access to a wall anyway now. I'll put it in the sideboard, but it there's, there's a chance that we may sideboard it again or, or even main deck it, but probably not. It's more realistic as a sideboard card. I'll take the uncommon for Volt Progress. Nice. So let's see. In our colors, we have a Tome Shredder, which is decent. I mean, if you are gonna have a few creatures, this is one of the ones that it's good to have access to. There's also Thrill of Possibility, which is strong. But I think we just want a Kelpie Guide because it ramps. It can also tap down your opponent's creatures. There is an Environmental Sciences here though. But no, I think we still take Kelpie because this, when you can ramp, and you can ramp as early as turn four, it's very strong. All right, so here we're gonna take uh, our first lesson card, and I'm very happy having access to at least one so that we get value off pop quiz, but certainly I'm looking to pick up more. This is definitely something our deck wants. Um, so there's that second land but I'm actually gonna take Introduction to Annihilation because I have a feeling that there's not too many other people uh, drafting Prismari. And at this rate, we're probably, we're likely to pick up another one of these. And uh, I think it's Introduction to Annihilation is stronger. Cause I mean, if I have to choose between like a 24th card that's a land or a 24th card that's actually relevant, I I'd prefer, I'd prefer the relevant card, if that makes sense. So this is not legendary, by the way, which means that you can stack, uh, I mean, they stack. So when both of these attack, you can discount by four. It also works very well with combat tricks, but not to the point where I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick them highly. So I think we got rewarded for, like, look, to be honest, it's not even like, a, there was nothing else in that pack that I would, I would take over this, but, you know, assuming there was a close pick, like we're significantly rewarded for forcing Prismari in this particular draft. But I think it's, you know, we're also drafting correctly. All right, so now I want to, I don't really need Archway Commons because I don't have a single double blue or double red card yet. There are some, there's the uncommon triple blue that lets you steal a, a permanent with converted mana cost three or less. I think it's creature actually, not permanent. Um, so we don't, I don't really need that tap land right now. Yeah, happily taking a fractal summoning. Okay. Well, this, this could be like a cheap enabler for our deck. I don't think we need it as of now, but it might, it might do something here. Well, I guess you can, you can put, you can fire it off on Maelstorm Muse and then you discount by three. That's pretty good. Uh, that's a gift. It's a very late academic dispute. Ooh, can we splash this? I think we try to find environmental sciences and we splash this card. I mean, come on, this is just stupid. Do I have a way of putting counters on anything? Not really, right? 
but it's still just a four yeah. four flying trample that you can basically make all your creatures uh four fours i mean it's either that or arcane subtraction i'm not saying we're going to play this card but you know i can prioritize dual lands now i regret not taking uh the land that, that makes a mana of any color because this is this is solid and we did end up with 11 creatures so you know this can become a 4-4 four, four. this can become a 4-4 four, four. this this can this can become a 4-4 four, four. may not be able to attack though but spirit summoning sure yeah i'm gonna end up with uh enough playables could also take a letter of acceptance but i think i want to maximize my lesson count how many lessons do i have why can't i see this come on come on arena no I'm trying to see my sideboard all right i don't have time 15 seconds i guess if i really want to play the elder dragon i need the letter it's fine. It's whatever. I'm not even sure that I'm going to play it yet. I think divide by zero is the pick. Eh, this is actually, I don't think that's, I don't think this card is that good. I'd rather just have another lesson. It looks prettier than it actually plays. So another burying books or another introduction to prophecy. I'm going to take introduction to prophecy. Look how late a silver quill uh, rare is going, but it's not even that good. Well, I guess you, you can trigger it at least once, it's fine. Just want another pop quiz, right? This this more consistently will draw me good stuff. And there's scenarios where that draw two isn't uh, is doing nothing. All right, so if we play a forest now, we can splash off this. Probably not running four pop quizzes. Oh yeah, this this deck is super strong. So I think this is the build. So what I took out was I took out Blood General. Just it's just a two-two in the deck. It's not anything anything good. Um, also took out the two Make Your Marks. I'm doing better better stuff than this, and it's just not necessary. And I took out one Pop Quiz, and then we have just a really strong deck. 
this is by far the strongest deck that I've drafted. I think this is a B plus, um, maybe maybe like an A minus deck, something like that. Could just be a straight up A, I don't know. Let's see how it plays out. Oh yeah. That's a, that's a windmill keep. <laughs> I've kept hands with like one, one good card and uh, six lands. If it's a deck that uh, has a lot of top end stuff, it's, it's a very different format. Like you, you making, you're making gameplay decisions and uh, draft pick decisions that you otherwise wouldn't make in typical formats. And one of the biggest ones being that there's really no limit to how greedy you can be in this in this format if, if you can believe it meaning that you know if you're split between like a, a seven drop and a two drop take take the seven drop especially if you can you know if you can recur things it's very strong all right so put one of them into your hand we want Hmm. So we have a bunch of lands, but we already have Magma Opus, so do I want just a Kelpie Guide? I'm going to take a Kelpie Guide. I'm not going to be greedy. Uh, one of them into my library. That would be the Masterpiece and Exile one of them short. By the way, uh, thanks to LSV, I now know this that you can actually tap down your opponent's lands on upkeep. That's something that I sometimes forget to do with these cards simply because they haven't printed them in, in quite a long time. I don't remember the, the last set that they printed where you can tap lands. So what's the play? I mean, I can always go pop quiz and then copy it with teach by example. So in that case, I just pass. I'm drawing four cards that way. Seems, seems pretty good. So let's go one, two, three, pop quiz. Let's take elemental summoning. Whoa, why didn't ah uh, why didn't it let me copy? What the heck? I that's so weird. I, I set full control. Oh well, I mean it's not like devastating or anything like that. It is a little bit annoying. Um let's just get in for four. Oh, I'm supposed to play this first. Yuck. That was my mistake. Whoa, why is this not a 4 4? What is going on? What did I tap wrong? I have no idea. I have no idea why, what's happening. Ah, when this thing attacks, ah, uh, duh. I thought I was uh, at the beginning of your combat step. Read the cards. That's okay. I mean, they just trade or not. Protection, protection for, well, I mean, it, it trades for God's willing. So at the end of the day, it's nothing like, nothing terrible. Um, Oh, there's not much I can do. But we are going to make a very strong play here with the Muse and Historian. And next turn, we can make 
two four fours, or we can outright cast a magma opus as well. We could also wait until eight mana, and then we can copy it. That that that's pretty strong because you'd rather copy this, right? So let's see. He might also have a whirlwind denial. That would be pretty sad if this gets countered. Okay. Yeah, we're going to do it now. I think Whirlwind Denial is an uncommon, so it's unlikely that he has it. And uh, there is a counterspell, I think, at rare, and it's double blue, so. Mm. Yeah, the frustrating thing about this deck is figuring out, like, what is the most busted thing you can do? Like, do you make two four fours now? Or do you play the Opus? Or, you know, do you wait to copy the Opus? I guess yeah. The hardest part is like ma managing managing the the extent of your greed. But again, on average, like the greedier you are, the better. Great opening hand. <laughs> Even though it looks like this hand is doing nothing, it's actually doing quite a bit. Of course, there's a risk you, you, you get flooded, but I'm not too concerned. So that's an insta trade, since I can cash this in from my graveyard later. Assuming uh, you know, I don't have anything better to do with my mana, which there's a, there's a good chance I, I will have better things to do with my mana. <laughs> So next turn we can, I guess, ramp to make a 3-2, have another blocker. Although you'll probably have enough mana to make this a 4-4. By the way, I've won a game with uh, 10 mana where my opponent just didn't realize that I could pump this thing twice. Like, it's not that he didn't do the math, he, he, was, he just wasn't paying attention. So that was a fun free win for me in the format so far. Uh, sure. I guess I should have, should have done it on my end step because it's uh, comes into play tapped. I don't think it would have made a huge difference. This is a bomb. I mean, this is something that I can easily lose to. All right, we're gonna draw a card. Okay, okay, so three more turns if we can survive that that long. To be honest, I don't I really don't know, but let's see. You can still block the squad, but they're gonna put the counters on another creature. They're gonna put it probably on the witch since it has menace. If I was them, I would consider making me draw two cards here.
Well, it's actually, I'm very fortunate that they decided to attack like that. Mm -hmm. All right, feeling a little bit better. So now I would actually double block the witch. Yeah, so he draws three. That's so sweet. Yeah, opponent's definitely going off. And he's playing a four-color deck. I, I haven't really seen too many four-color decks. Splashing for a God's Willing and Squad. I'm not sure what's going on. Hey, I'm not complaining. It's working. If he wins, we are one and one only, though, so... We go to uh, we go to the final match. Uh oh, what does this do again? So you're gonna get Matt. Ah, that sucks. He's gonna get the Opus. I think I can um, make a treasure token in response. No, I can't. I should have done it. Yeah, no. It's then then you would have just gotten teach by example. There's no point in doing it prior. I need to bring in my um uh, the card that deals damage equal to a card exiled from your graveyard. Why is he attacking with this? That was weird. He just threw away. Felt like he didn't need to do that. I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. Okay. So we can copy burying books now. This is pretty strong. So now we're now we're stabilizing. Five color. <laughs> what a crazy deck. He's thinking of whether or not to attack with the pests. Rip apart. Sure. Yes. And I take six between the ward and uh, three points of damage.
Yeah, that's just lethal. All right. Assuming he can do the math. Okay, 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 okay. So, sideboarding. Yeah, I, I have the, I, I had the dragon whatever sorcery that you need to exile an instant sorcery from your graveyard and then deals that much damage to all creatures and all non-dragon creatures. I don't remember what it's called. That was last draft. That's not this draft. I don't think I change anything. I mean, my deck I think is uh, optimized. Most of the sideboard card slots are taken up by uh, by lessons. So we gotta. We definitely have a nice nice matchup here. Decks are about. I don't know if they're equal power, but they're they're closer than I'd like them to be. <laughs> For sure, that's a keep. We'll we'll find red. We can cast everything but one card in our in our hand. And we have plenty of mountains and red sources. Yeah, 21% uh, odds of drawing a land that returns, so. I'm not sure why I did that on my main phase. I guess I thought I had an environmental sciences, but I didn't even bother to check my to check my deck. I was too lazy to make two clicks. that perfect mana like <laughs> five color deck he's missing green i guess but <laughs> greed greed is rewarded let's just attack although do i want access to six mana not not really Okay. So we can play Arcane Subtraction now. Let's get... Let's get Introduction to Annihilation.
I think this is like the perfect time of day in Cyprus. It's not too hot, not too cold. You're still getting some sunlight. It's a completely different feeling. Like with sunlight, your your depression goes away very quickly. You get some vitamin D in you, natural natural vitamin D. And you, anybody can, is, is going to be in a better mood. The only thing that sucks about living in Cyprus is you can only go outside twice a day, and that's only that's the last day that you can do that. You have to send an SMS every time. If police stop you when you've been outside for three hours or more, or more you can get a 300 euro fine. So that's like 450 bucks, something like that. Um, so I have access to seven mana. Yeah, I think I want to keep Kelpie back. I'll, I'm going to play Elemental Summoning and then keep up Divide by Zero and basically counter whatever they play. Let's attack first. Now, and I also want to, I should start thinking about what card I want to tap down on, up, on upkeep. I think maybe red. So if I make two more land drops, then I'm probably just going to start shutting down lands. It's going to mana screw and uh, deaccelerate de my opponent. Mm, sure. Well, no, that's not going to work. Let's get another introduction to Annihilation. Okay, I guess one way to make your opponent quit is just the, uh, you know, increase the annoyance factor. And Kelpie certainly does that. Great opening hand, four lands, a powerful seven drop. You're better off playing this on turn three, not turn two, so that you can actually play uh, play one of the lands. So I'm gonna hold off on uh, expressive iteration. God, this just this card's so bad compared to historian, right?
it's actually getting very hot because the sun's right in my window. Okay. It is it is a beating. Sure, I'm taking four damage on turn two. On turn three, I mean. Uh, I do believe we can race. Either way, I can afford to take another hit. This artwork is just so goofy. I don't know. What, what, what are these people doing? I'm not saying it's bad, bad artwork. It's, it's good artwork, just... The, the people in it look a bit goofy for my taste. So, are we racing? Is missing land drops. Um, so if I play Kelpie Guide, I can ramp this out. So it's not the most man efficient spell right now but I still think it's going to set me up for a very strong turn. I mean, we are walking a tightrope here because th things can get out of hand Quite, quite quickly, but I'm actually okay with this. Each player loses two life. Okay. Yeah. That's close, but I think... Uh, I can't imagine what he would have that could, could get me in trouble here with, even with five mana. Like, okay, let's say he has removal. Uh, he could have actually tapped two creatures. That is a common. If he's playing that, then I just, I just punt it. So I should have kept the creature back, but I think he would have snapped it off already if he had it. But that, that is something I didn't think about. Uh, timeout or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it's called. Study break. That or this is the longest uh, slow roll in, in, in history, at least in my history. <laughs> All right, let's secret rendezvous. Oh God, why would you ever play that? Why would you ever put this card in your deck? I think this is straight up the, the worst card in the format. I don't think there's anything that gives death touch at instant speed, but in case he's got a pump spell.
sure. He's still only killing one of my things and uh, I guess he's just dead. Alrighty, halfway there. Yeah, we, I think we've been through this. There's really no, no, like, what am I sideboarding? Another pop quiz or a Blood Age General? There's, there's nothing. And there's nothing I want main deck like. There's nothing that's such a huge threat that I feel the introduction to Annihilation needs to be my starting deck. Or main deck, I should say. I, I have my own turns for some, some things, if, if you guys haven't noticed yet, so don't mind me. And I think I uh, abused the match, match and game. I used them, uh, I intermixed them, even though that's not, not the correct way. We have a burying box and, and two islands, so I don't think we're going to get run over too bad. We, do, we will need to find a mountain. Um, or like a pledge mage or something, but we can draw expressive iteration, arcane subtraction. We have a campus guide in the deck, so I think this is a reasonable keep. I don't know where where's the best place to to put the damn video. Um, Okay, neither of us doing much. <laughs> oh my God. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So no matter what I what I do, I'll still have to discard at least one card, but I can minimize that by cycling masterpiece. And then playing a historian. And now I only have to discard one card. I feel like this is a bit too slow with, with three lands. It's unlikely that I'm going to go off with this card anytime soon. So I'm guessing we're going to see one of those plus one plus one cards. I don't know. We we could have put illustrious historian in the graveyard, but then I felt like I needed I needed to have a creature out in case I don't draw a land. I need a blocker. I mean, I do have I do have pledge mage, so I don't know. I don't know if that was the right play. I think we just pass. Like if he if he plays the plus one plus one pump spell, we can just bounce it. And we can draw something from our sideboard. Probably elemental summoning. I mean now I don't even need to need to bounce it. I can just I can just block. I could have also bounced and entered a prophecy, but that doesn't seem very good. I'm really hoping, like the, the best thing for me to see is he plays that, 
Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature learn uh, sorcery and then they bounce it before it resolves so that he doesn't get the learn trigger. So that would be that would be the best bet. He had like two of them, so eh. there's like a yes, yes. Oh, one mana or yeah, one mana or greater. That's right. Auto pain. So a problem that doesn't get to learn, I get to learn, I get to take a big thing. Okay. I don't know. I, I don't understand why people do that. All right, so we're in the finals. That's sweet. So we can find our forest. Uh, for Mr. Tanazir, that's a cool name. And then hopefully we can go off with uh, uh, Maelstorm Pulse into Opus Like on turn six. That, that's the dream. I, I just love the flavor on this card. <laughs> He's, he's helping the little kids make sure that he can, they can get their land so they can cast their spells. Come on, how adorable is that? So do we want a letter of acceptance or do we want a pop quiz? I guess, I, I guess anything that helps us ramp to um, Opus is, is good in a vacuum. Also, if we get like a five drop, we can play it next turn. So Tanazir is one example of a five drop that we can play. That would be pretty sweet if we can find it off the top. Okay. <laughs> so definitely, I think we just play Maelstrom, Maelstrom Muse and pass. And and uh, we can we can definitely cast this. We can cast it if we find a land, because then we'll have. Yeah, if we find the land, we can we can go off with this right now, and that would just be so sick. No blocks. Definitely no blocks. The thing is, like, Prismari is designed in such a way where you don't even need to bump this guy's power to go off. Well, unfortunately, we can't do it this turn. So, I think let's go pop quiz, see what we find. So we found our land. I guess we just want introduction to annihilation. And let's just keep up divide by zero to counter whatever they play. And then next turn we can kill both of these, divide three, four damage three and one. It's pretty good. Do I even care? Uh, So he'll still be able to copy it. So what's my best bet? I guess my best bet is to bounce the golem. Ooh, 
Ooh, I used a timeout. I should take note of that. Yeah, because this way he can't even replay Golem this turn. And he can still give this flying. Take elemental summoning. I don't know. I, I keep messing around with the video because I, I literally can't figure out what the best what the best place for it is. Ah, he can, yeah, he's copying it twice. Sure. Yeah, so this one's going to resolve. He's going to learn once, but this one's going to fizzle because I bounced uh, the reflective golem, and like I said, he cannot replay it. Unless, I don't remember if you need a land drop, of course, but I have four, he's got five. No, he made a land drop because I've been making land drops every turn, I think. Show of confidence. Sure. You can be as confident as you want, my friend, because guess what's coming? That was a, that was a sweet turn. I guess if I win this one, I'll go for back to back three nos because I'm getting a much better sense. I'm getting a much better handle on the format. I mean, like I said, the, the biggest the biggest change that I've made, the biggest adjustment, is just be greedy. I'm usually I usually try to be very uh, correct in my picks, and I, you know, I have I prioritize two drops. Like, don't do that in this format. Just take the a drop. If you see it early, if it's early in the pack, uh, you know, le lean towards taking uh, very powerful late game bomb cards that can give you a huge advantage. <laughs> yeah, OP is just gonna get run over here. Um. So what's the play? Let's see. I have, I have access to seven mana. So I can play mage and then elemental summoning. That means they can only attack with elemental. I'll trade an elemental for, a two, for this two, three. And then he'll have to choose between taking two damage or double blocking this. And he might not even, I don't know. Let's see what he does. I, I can also just bounce something for three. Yeah, I might do that as well. That, yeah, yeah, I think this, this, this goes from uh, five to three mana. Interesting. Okay, so you want to block just like that. It's fine by me. And then let's go six. So let's go. This will make elemental summoning even cheaper. Uh, I'm so confused. What is the best play? Do I play an elemental summoning here or do I play a Kelpie guy to start tapping things down? I don't know. I still feel like, 
this is the correct play. Yeah, I'm two lands away from Kelpie Guide. Never mind. You need you need eight lands for this. So this gives me more threats on the board. I mean, this is this is not even like a fair contest, to be honest. He's going to hit me for three. I don't have a flying blocker that can stop uh, the the combat professor this turn, but. I know the two cards in this hand are like Golem and the uh, Inkling Summoning. So if the other cards are on par with that. We're so far ahead right now. You know, so this this gets him with Vigilance. There's no reason not to attack. And actually, he can get in with the uh, Order as well. So I'm taking I'm taking six here. Like this is, you know, I got to be careful not not to just die. But dealing it's going to be difficult to deal twelve, and I can crack back for a lot. Like I have lethal on board, and I find if I find a way to copy Burian books now, that that would work. Oh, this gets discounted. Yes. Yes. God, this is such a good card. That's such a good card. I didn't even I didn't even realize that right there. So I only take four. And so I can go introduction to annihilation and I can force my opponent to chum block. And I can also play Kelpie. So he has to block, he can choose whether he wants to trade. Uh, the sweeper that's in these colors, I think it's like two, three, four, five, six. There is an eight mana sweeper. So I, I mean, I wasn't gonna run out Kelpie guide. I believe it's the white one that if you play it for, for four, an opponent gets to return to permanence this hand and then you destroy all permanence. But for eight, you just straight up destroy all permanence. I think that's the one. So for that reason, I probably wasn't worth playing out Kelp because we had enough lethal threats. Same plan. After this, I think I'm gonna take a break, go for like a little five mile run or uh, yeah, three to five mile run while the sun's still out and it's not hot anymore. It's like perfect, perfect temperature for running. You're not gonna sweat too badly. I think there's actually like some health benefit to learning how to run in the heat. You gotta be like, okay, listen, I've been, I've been running since I was 17. I, I usually run like, I don't know, 20, 20 to 40 kilometers a week, uh, depend, depending on how I'm feeling. There was a time where I used to do like a half marathon every week. I did that for like six weeks in a row last summer. And I wasn't even doing any races. I was just going out, you know, I'm thinking, all right, I'll do 10 kilometers. How am I feeling? I'm feeling good. You know, put some, put some Vaseline on the, on the places that uh, can really get torn up and from, from the rubbing on, uh, uh, on your clothes and just keep going like. It's a, it's a great feeling, especially after you three and all. Like you come back, and you're gonna be you're gonna be much more focused. I think it's good to take breaks. Like if you're playing, it's not just about playing, right? You want to make sure that you're getting enjoyment out of what you're doing. So, pledge mage. I think pledge mage is better. It can block the golem. So then let's just play a land, and pass.
Okay, so he can't copy the spell, but he does get to learn. Um, if he attacks, I'm snap double blocking, of course. No attacks. Okay, okay. So let's go Expressive Federation. Hopefully we can find a land. We did. So put one of them into your hand. We want... Uh, I don't think a 2-2 is very effective on this board. Let's just take a pop quiz. One of them into your library. And... Exile one of them. So the one that we exile is the one that we can play. And let's find our green mana. And pass. Borean books can just kill the 2 1. Fine strike. I mean, he gets to draw two cards. It's cool. It's a good effect. I'm not saying anything, but I have good blocks. Eh, I have decent blocks. How about that? Campus guy, I think this, this little guy's done his job. So if I need to trade him and like a historian for this, I'm happy doing that because I can bring Historian back. So I don't feel like I'm losing much here. And if he's using this as an engine, I'm happy taking this off the board. Ew, okay, okay, okay. Again, not, not the end of the world. It is a solid two for one. So this thing, I always forget that it comes into play tapped. Um, yeah, we just passed. We're gonna have to fire off the burying books. Maybe to stop some, uh, some, some more of these cheap effect, copy them shenanigans. Okay. I think this card's gone up for me as the format as the format's gone on. It's a good card. Hmm. Okay. Okay. That's strong. Well. It's about to be one and one. So I'm expecting a six land in the rice to Extus here. It is a common. And that would be that would be pretty bad. He would give this flying. And then you can jam and I have to chump block if that's the case, because that's exactly lethal. So. Uh, still very scary. This card, this card's super good. I think even it's probably better in lower hold, just because it's a better archetype. And both um, silver quill, silver quill, and lower hold, they both want to go wide. They're they're spirit tokens in both. Maybe a, a bit more. 
in uh, I don't know. I'm not going to speculate. I don't know the exact uh, count. All right. I think I think we're going to go to we're going to go to match three here. So this is just awful. So I have to block like this. What can save me? Certainly not a mountain. All right, good game. Let's go to the finals. Uh, do I want to be on the play? Yeah, I want to be, actually, I do want to be on the play because I, I don't want my opponent's aggressive deck to be on the play. That's, that's the main reason. Good enough. Probably gonna make it make a token. Uh, actually, now with this, I'm less likely, to, less tempted to do that because this is now, this is now a six drop. So we're not. I mean, we don't have too many other things to ramp to. Like magma opus is the only one. So maybe making a treasure is not not the best move either way, but it's certainly something I want to do less when I have this in my hand. Not, not to mention use. Okay, nice. I'll offer the block because this this will still help me cast uh, elemental masterpiece early, and I just need to I, I I just need to preserve my life total. I'm perfectly I'm perfectly comfortable with trading there. One more land and I can play this. Otherwise, we can play expressive iteration into pop quiz. That's also fine. Oh yeah. I'm sure glad I did not turn you into a treasure token. I think it's worth doing. And then let's play Pledge Mage. I'm not going to play a land yet. Let's play expressive iteration first and see what see what happens. This will also make sure that uh, so my library. Do I need double? I have both. I guess I'll take an island. Exile a mountain. Let's attack with spin mountain first. So let's order them like that. 
arcing subtraction on the L. It's two life, right? Yeah. Three life. Uh, let's get elemental summoning. Why is elemental summoning not not too less? That was weird, right? So whenever this attacks, the next instant or sorcery. Ah, it's only for one, the next instant or sorcery. And I already cast. Yeah, I cast Arcane Subtraction for one. All right. Well, we got there. I'm going to take a break, go for a run, come back, and then we'll try to go for a back-to-back 3-0. -back All right. So I just had a nice seven-mile run. Just a notch over, notch over seven miles. That's 11.6 kilometers or so. Let's uh, jump right in. Hopefully we can go back to back three, you know, again. I'm I'm enjoying this format. I think it's I think it's a lot of fun. I like doing uh, you know, just ridiculously overpowered things like you know, copying uh, a spell with which you mean two, you know, two four fours make four four fours. That's 16, 16 of power and toughness on one turn over four bodies. That's that's very impressive. So doing stuff like that is fun. And I think in to some extent it compensates the fact that you end up sometimes end up with with more cards uh in your in your sideboard than than you really would like and there's less cards that you could use for your deck the lessons somewhat make up for that but i, th I still think kaltheim was better designed than this set so far probably kaltheim and uh the cycle with amonkhet amonkhet hour of devastation is probably uh one of my favorite ones Along with actually Shadows over Innistrad and uh, Eldritch Moon, I really like that cycle. Even though it was several years ago now. All right, so let's see here. We have uh, let's put let's put me here. So we have Sign and Blood. Target player draws two cards and loses two life. That's very strong. Um, I think the bookworm is also very strong. Now nah, I'm going to take the bookworm. Let's see, Fervent Mastery, you may pay. Oh, God, no, that's definitely not. That's not a good one. Ooh, okay, so now we have Rutha. That is definitely a bomb, and that's a reason to... We can splash book where I'm actually in these decks. Um, there's also an Elemental Masterpiece, but I'm just going to take Rutha. I'm not passing Rutha. There's also an environmental sciences though. I think I'm actually going to take environmental sciences. This is this is the more this is like two mana fixing that goes into any deck. I'm definitely not passing explosive welcome though. With that I'm snap picking. Over the second environmental sciences, I think the second one is is a little worse. But again, like now it doesn't matter what I play, I can always splash this. So I do think this is better than a biomathematician. There's also the dual land, but no, I, I like this card. And actually, I really like Prismar as an archetype. Wow. Okay, I'm going to take Elemental Masterpiece now. I disagree with that with that ranking entirely. It is it is better than the 2.0. And I think I take the first Elemental Mastery over the first Spectacle Mage. Because like I said, if there's one thing that this format rewards, it is just unabashed greed. One of the reasons to take this is because I have Bookworm. So this will help me uh, play it on curve. 
I'm not a fan of a card like this. I think it's much worse than it looks. So it's either Shock or a Dual Land. I think Shock's sufficient. Like Lightning Bolt is in the format and is just straight up better, but Shock is still good enough to where I'm happy taking it. It's just that Lightning Bolt is that much better than Shock. And that's, I think, I don't remember if it was my last draft, but one of the one of the best drafts I've had um, was with Lightning Bolt. I actually ended up winning by hitting for three in the air and then just Lightning Bolting to my opponent's face. I don't think I recorded that draft, but... Yeah, so this this means that we can we're, we're we can be very flexible on uh, what what we want to splash. We can splash black if we want. We can splash white. Green obviously is a reason. Bookworm, like you know, by 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 turn eight is when you're more likely to have this. I cannot believe this wheel. That is just crazy. I mean, I'm not taking it because I do need a spectacle mage, but I was gonna. First pick, I think that's a first pickable card. I would probably play four of these if, if I had it, if I had them in my deck, because again, you can always just this, you could cycle it to make a treasure. I shouldn't say cycle, cycle implies you're, you're drawing a card. Not, not a big fan of this card. Like, let's say you have a one drop, right? Are you not supposed to cast your one drop on turn one? You're supposed to wait until turn three so that you can get it to come up with a plus one plus one counter. You're really looking to cast this on turn four on like a two drop, which is asking for a lot because like if you have a two drop in your opening hand, you want to play it out. So you would need to have two two drops in your opening hand for this to actually do something. I'm going to take the card draw. Ah, see? <laughs> we we wield this anyway. Like, I'll, I'll throw it in there for now. Oh, man, that's so difficult. I think I'm just supposed to take Ingenious Inspiration. Like, if you can, if you can hit with this twice, you can really go off. Like, being able to recast them, you can, you can technically get in, if you get in for Double Strike, you're you're casting two things, but I think this is just more more efficient, right? Yeah, kill something, draw a card for three mana. Actually, target anything. What is this now? Exile the top X cards of your library for each land card exiled this way. Create a treasure token for each blue card exiled this way. Draw a card for each red card exiled this way. No, I don't think that's what I want to be doing. No, yeah, this is not exciting. I think I just want a second one of these or potentially another Spectacle Mage. I think I'm going to take another Spectacle Mage because it makes two, two, three. I have three big spells already and this makes them cheaper. Um. Yeah, this is the card that I was thinking of that cares about. Uh, it's not a rare. It's a, it's a blue common. This is the card that cares about instant and sorcery cards that you have in exile. So if you're looking at something that allows you to uh, exile spells, uh, you can rank it just a, a little bit higher because this card is in the format and it's not common. So reject or another explosive welcome. I'm just going to take another explosive welcome. Great spot to pick up uh, elemental summoning. There is a trick, there is a frost trickster. But I'm going to have enough playable. I want, uh, I definitely need uh, lesson cards because I only have one at, at the moment. And I'd like to be a bit further along than that at this point in the draft. Kelpie Guide's been great. It can help ramp to Bookworm. Oh, yeah.
this is just incredibly efficient. Creative outburst, like it's more powerful, but for three mana, you really can't ask for more. Ah, oh, this is so good. The problem is, I'm way well. I'm not. Yeah, I'm. I'm a, I'm a little bit more heavy red than green. I do have one Prismari campus. Maybe I'm really. I really am supposed to take this, but I. I can do some. I can see doing some ridiculously silly things with this card. Uh, probably just want this lesson card as well in case there's an X1 or some artifact that I need to destroy. I think the second copy of Environmental Sciences is a little bit worse and I will play, I will play three Spectacle Mages which will let me play three explosive welcomes and also buy them back. I'm not, I can already tell I'm not playing this. Also not playing first name class. So really the only thing that I'm short on is something to do on turn one and turn two. This is not good. So going into pack three, oh, that's a great pickup. Nice. Arcane subtraction is actually something that I'm happy with. So let's see. I have one, two, three lesson cards, really two and a half because the deal one is really irrelevant. That is a late gift. I mean, we're in the right colors for sure. I don't think there's any argument about that. Counterspell, two mana. I think I'd rather have a fractal summoning for the sideboard because I'm already at enough playables. I'm probably not even running a bookworm. Like there's just no need to worsen my mana base because I, I have so many things that I could do. I have three A drops, like in a red, in a red deck, this is as good as a, as a tra as the trample worm. So there's no need to make our mana base worse. Uh, I think I like negate for the sideboard. Yep. Just happily taking another one of these. Again, I need early stuff. I don't mind trading these things off. You can just go off with this if you have cheap spells. Like, kind of doesn't work with academic dispute, right? Because it becomes unblockable. And it's not a choice. Ah, oh, that's so sweet. What a bomb rare. Of course, I can't play the white side of it. Not that I would need to, to be honest. Uh, now I think I will take the artist. I mean, this just makes a ton of treasures. Its power can get out of control very quickly. How many learning cards do I have? So one, two three, four, uh, four and a half, four and a half. I think I'm gonna take expanded anatomy. I could also take the access tunnel, but I do need like triple blue. So I don't wanna wreck myself inadvertently. Second Prismari Campus is, is just right. As I mentioned, I don't really want too many of these. Three tap lands is probably at the level where you're, you're losing more than you're gaining. If these were lands that, that were, like if these were deserts that you could sack for value, completely different story, but you're not gonna, you're not really gonna be in a situation where you'll need a 10 mana to scry twice. That's unlikely.
I think this track, this deck is the strongest one I've built so far. This is like an this is an this is an example of an A tier deck. Like A minus A, but it's it's super strong. It's gonna be very difficult to make cuts right now. I guess I can cut one explosive welcome, not to be too greedy. This you can always cash in for a treasure. This you you don't want to have two like you don't want to have two of these in your opening hand. That would be very bad. Um, enthusiastic study and Prismatia Apprentice. That is a legit combo. You can attack with it uh, as a as a pretty big creature, unblockable. Okay, so this is definitely out. I could care less. This is not, we're not an aggro deck. We're not trying to win by racing on the ground. I want all my early stuff. I guess I can cut one enthusiastic study. I think we can cut one warden, one welcome. I definitely want 17 lands. So two more cuts. Probably don't need Tome Shredder. Like we have three Spectacle Mages. Like on average, I'd rather just have this as my three drop. This will get bigger over time, but I'd rather just get to casting my top end. So. Yeah, three or less. So that's a huge chunk of our deck right here. We do have, I mean, with this, we do have a, Bit more incentive to play uh, to play three drops like Tom Shredder is another card that Pilar can hit. But actually, no, it doesn't matter because it says until you, yeah, until you reveal. So you're actually always going to hit. So then we don't need we don't need Tom Shredder. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-legendary non-land card with three or less mana value. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Put all revealed cards not cast this way on the bottom of your library, a random order. I'm always unsure if this means that you can cast sorceries and in instant speed. Uh, I can never remember the answer to that, unfortunately. I'm pretty sure the answer is yes, but I'm, I'm paranoid, so maybe that's why I'm thinking no. Uh, but it's something that usually you can, you can Google and find out. So I'm not sure what the last cut is, maybe like a the Fuddler. It's mediocre. It's just another two drop. Like I'm happy with one, two, three, four, five, seven things to do on turn one and two. I think this is perfectly fine. Uh, let's just double check the mana real quick. So I have nine, ten red. Nine, ten red. I think that's actually right because I need triple blue for tempted. And it's going to be tricky with only nine islands to get it consistently by turn four. So I'm more tempted to cash the big spells in for treasures with this type of deck. I think you should basically, like, it would be wrong not to do it if I have, if I have nothing else to spend two mana on. I think with this deck, you, you just always make a treasure. It's an, it's an auto decision because we have so much ramp and... Uh, we can we can really benefit from getting to like seven mana first. So yeah, I'm predicting a pretty pretty easy 3L. I think this deck is absurd. I can see losing to a mirror. I don't see really losing to anything else. Like there may be some crazy lore hold aggro decks that can beat us if we have a slow start and we keep some slow hands, but even cryptic commands will. Uh, will let me catch up. Like this, this thing kills something and creates a treasure for three mana at instant speed. Like, if you cast it late, this is a reason to keep lands in your hand, actually. Because casting this late just means that you could cycle two lands, and we are playing 17, so at some point in the game, we are going to have extra lands probably later because we'll want to get up to like uh, eight for explosive welcome. But beyond that, like, we can just toss him.
And now we just keep up uh, Prismara command. Hopefully there's a target that we can that we can zap and then we'll be one turn closer to explosive welcome. Okay, now we can actually make the artist. I think that's the right play. Because now we're gonna get we're gonna get a treasure off every spell, and we can even cat make two treasures this turn, especially if he's not gonna cast a creature here. Nice. Um let's stack first. Yeah, if I learn here, I'm definitely taking environmental sciences because I need to keep hitting my, hitting my land drops. I don't know what's going on. Um, I'm debating whether or not to cycle academic dispute here. I think it's the correct play. I, I guess I should have done that before combat. Um, decline. And let's get Environmental summonings, cast it. We need islands. Yeah, so now next turn we can cast explosive welcome. I mean, our opponent's actually just dead anyway. He's at six life. I'm not even paying attention. <laughs> this is this is going to be just disgusting overkill right now. Oh no! Oh no! I I almost I almost feel bad. Almost feel bad. And I make a treasure. <sighs> Sideboarding. I could see playing like a second pillar drop warden as a blocker instead of like, instead of what? Hmm. Again, I just, I don't see what, I don't see what the worst card is. The deck's working like it's it's working more or less exactly like uh, I expected, and again, like with this type of deck, I'm, I'll keep a six land, like a six lands and a two drop. I'm snap keeping that. Would not do it in another formats, but this this format is different. Again, I could be wrong; it's just my opinion. But if you're trying to like get to seven seven eight mana anyway. 
it's not that terrible to have six lands in your opening hand. Especially if you have card draw. I would like to play one practical uh, practical study, I think it's called. Draw for then discard two unless you discard a uh, instant or sorcery. I think that's a very good card. And let's pass keeping up shock. I have no idea what our opponent's doing. He, like, he was also not casting anything for the first few turns last game. That's that's really not what this arc like. Unless he's got a sweeper, that's really not what these colors are trying to do. This is still a like relatively aggressive deck that wants you to play combat tricks and uh, an attack. Okay. All right, I'm shaking my head because I, I have no idea what's going on. He's he's holding a bunch of cards. I'm not gonna play anything. I'm I'm just at this point I have to assume he's playing, he's playing a sweeper, because unless he's super mana screwed, like what is he what what is he holding in his hands? A bunch of like uh, I don't know, silver pull cards. Maybe he's missing blue mana. Okay. I'm gonna give my own creature minus four, minus zero. I don't see it. I mean, I don't, I don't wanna take damage here and this still draws me a card. Uh, sure. So now unfortunately I don't get the learn trigger. Uh, I don't mind taking six. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna kill my own creature here. I think that would be silly. Now that he's tapped out, I will frantic study. So this will let me. Uh, think I want to gain some life. I need to go take my contact lenses out because my eyes are a bit tired. Yeah, and now we just, uh, we, we keep up shock. I guess, I mean, I guess OP got super flooded. Like, I feel terrible, but it's also his fault. Like, what, what, kind of, what kind of hand are you keeping? What are you hoping to accomplish with a hand like that? Exile card, no. So we can go Apprentice and we can Scry now. Obviously keeping up a bunch of spells as well. Too easy. I mean, not really a matchup that you wanna brag about. All right, I'm gonna go take my contacts out. All right, let's keep trucking. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, triple blue for tempted. Kelpie guide, I'm in.
I hope I can steal some creature with like a nice magecraft ability. Uh, hmm. So I'm debating between Kelpie Guide and Spectacle Mage. I still, I guess I'm still gonna play Kelpie Guide. Like I'm not gonna block with either one of these. Uh, because I'll steal whatever whatever he plays if if he plays something on on this turn. I'm not really gonna sit on this. If there's if there's any three drops, uh, never mind. I guess I will sit on it now. Okay. So I have access to five mana. <laughs> I guess I'm going to play Spectacle Mage now because if I get a land, I can play Creative Outburst. Kelpie Guy can always untap. In fact, what I could do is when opponent attacks, I can untap a land and uh, Arcane Subtraction to make sure that I can learn. And this would be a very mana efficient spell. In fact, I can block. Let's make sure that we target our opponent's creatures, not our creatures. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's the ticket. Mm, that's not something we can steal. It, it is something we can kill at some point. Okay. So let's see, I have five, and this is six. Yeah, I guess this is the best play for me. Let's just go get a land. And, uh, I guess we play Apprentice and that's it. Not, not doing much else. So I'm I'm really hoping he does not have God's willing. Uh, yeah, but hmm. So if he does have God's willing, I'd rather Pigment Storm get negated. Okay. So he didn't have it, but I still think it's the correct play there. Because if if I'm going to have a spell fizzle. I'd rather have the pigment storm fizzle. Okay, so that's a good target for creative outburst now. I mean, we could also just steal it, right? Why don't we just steal it? Seems like a good card to steal. Mm, so what do we see? We saw some learn cards, some removal, Symmetrist, summoning. 
So he's gaining life. And I don't really see a need to change anything. I still don't want this guy. I think it's a terrible card. Five mana, three, four, like, just where do, you, where do you put it? Would I rather have this or like an explosive welcome in my deck? Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. As the wonderful Mr. Gordon Gecko said in Wall Street. If you haven't watched that movie, you should definitely go watch it. Oh, definitely. Plag will make sure that I can uh, find lands if I need to. This is definitely a keep. And I am turning this into a treasure if I have nothing to do on, on turn three, which is unlikely with Prismari Command. Really cool, really, really cool card design and really, really nice plans for standard, I think. Cards like this, they, they give more versatility um, to gameplay. Like they make you really think about, you know, what it is that you should be doing. So let's pass and I'm not sure which one of these I'd rather throw so this is what this is seven and this is seven i'd rather toss creative outburst probably because now if we get an island we can definitely play tempted fortunately we didn't get it but i think that's okay we just play apprentice and pass That's okay, we can steal this with uh, Tempted. Either one of those we could steal. Just need an island. Um, do I wanna fire off? I don't really wanna fire this off because then uh, I can't cast Tempted, so I just need to eat this, unfortunately. Island? No. I think the play is to toss Elemental Masterpiece end of turn. Let's see, if I play this, I I can maybe double block the Quandrix Pledge Mage. Okay, let's let's do that. It also makes Elemental Masterpiece a little bit cheaper, but I'm still stuck at four mana. God, if he has something that can pump twice, it would be so bad. But I don't care about double blocking here because I can still, I can still st steal the card. Nice, okay, that is very good news. <laughs> So I think that the plan is double block and Prismari command to make another treasure. This We could still win this game. I know that we're stuck at three lands, but this is a perfectly winnable game. I'm gonna do it end of turn though. See if he taps out first. Okay, 
right, so now we use Mari command treasure and two damage. So two damage to any target. Target player, that's me, create a, creates a treasure. Auto pay, resolve, nice. All right, so now we don't even need to sack both treasures. We only need to sack one. We can also just go pig. I mean, no, I think I think it's better to steal this four or five because if it dies, we draw a card, and uh, it's it also works nicely with academic dispute because whatever he, whatever our opponent plays, well, almost everything, almost anything our opponent plays, I guess. So now we pigment storm. And let's just rumble. One land away from Masterpiece. It's a good, good target to hit with Academic Dispute for sure. Okay, I get to draw a card. Nice. Hmm. I think this is the right play. Uh, he can he can definitely drain us, and it could be a problem. But I mean, I wasn't killing this thing with uh, academic dispute anyway, and uh, I just need to find find removal. So at this point, he would need to drain me twice. But I guess it's not going to happen. So let's attack first. And let's inspire and gain some life. So the card that I want most right now to avoid like just losing to some weird drain effect is environmental sciences because I can also cast it right now. Probably should have gotten an island just in case of some weird haste creature for our, uh, arcane subtraction, but I don't think it's a significant mistake. Um, I don't even know if there are any common haste creatures that I, I can't think of in, in those colors. One away from back to back for you know. Uh, easy keep. Easy, easy keep. All creatures, no spells. But actually, good, good enablers for the deck. So I'm going to try to offer the block here. No blocks means we play Spectacle Mage. So now this is six, and it's soon to be five off the second mage. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going for a block there. That would have been a blowout. That would have been very bad. And this is exactly why Shock is so much worse than. Uh, <laughs> Then lightning bolt. I'm actually gonna play the spectacle mage because then I can play this on next turn and I get to keep up shock this way. Oh, never mind. I won't be able to cast it next turn, but I still think this is the correct play over Pillar Drop Warden. I'm not blocking this 3-3 three, three with a 1-5 anyway, because it, it can easily uh, 
just use a bump spell to, to kill this. And now I need to hold full, hold full control. Well, now I can offer the double block and shock, but I'd rather use shock to, to uh, kill Tome Shredder before he can exile heated debate. <laughs> Nice, okay. Okay. So unless Spectacle Mage gets uh, gets zapped, we can now fire off Creative Outburst. Hopefully kill this thing before it gets any, any bigger. I hope he just keeps up mana for Illustrious Historian. He's got, what, two cards in hand? It's unlikely that he can pump, pump this twice. So I'm just gonna go for it. And we can also buy this back. I'm gonna take explosive welcome. I only need one more one more land because I'm getting the discount off spectacle mage. And uh, that's pretty sweet. He, he would really need to have something something very special to come back. He would need a counter spell to start with because this is just five to the face. Attacking seems very aggressive when you're at five life. Okay. <clears throat> that that seemed like a strange attack. Again, I don't I don't really negate. What did we see? We saw a heated debate. And he is playing Prismaria. I think, yeah, I think we want to negate. Because he probably has some of the top end stuff that we have. Put in a negate for an arcane substitute subtraction. Right? I mean, what else am I taking out? I still have, I mean, I'm still at 14, 14 uh, non creature cards. They're all spells, I believe. I don't think I'm playing any enchantments or anything like that. Yeah, for, sh for sure I like this format. I mean, if, if we win now, I will go for a third, uh, a third three and you know, just because I'm on a roll. And it's always it's always nice when you can go three back to back. Okay, let's move this video. Uh, definitely keep. The treasure is going to make this a three two. 
the treasure from Prismari command. Short. I think between these two, the apprentice is, is uh, still probably better. I'm not, I'm not the only one who's onto this card. Short. Nice. There's a, so now there's a city for uh, Prismari command. I'm gonna play that before I take before I play the artist because this way I can also attack. Okay. So now he can't attack with the pledge mage. That's good. So I only take two. He might also just keep the wolf back. No, okay, getting aggressive. That's fine by me. I mean, at 12 life, I'm I'm very comfortable. Mm -hmm. So the only thing we can do is play a 3-2 dwarf shaman. Play the island and pass. I mean, now it wouldn't be terrible to cycle arcane substitution um, because I'm going to get the treasure back anyway from the artist. So I'm going to I'm going to offer up some trades here. Or am I? <laughs> All right, so what do we want to kill? I don't mind blocking like this and like this. So let's see what opponent does. Pump spell, anything. I mean, if they have nothing, I'm not even going to cast Arcane. Uh, uh-huh, okay. So you want to do that? I guess I will do the same thing in response to your creature. Okay, okay, so I still can't cast this, but I can go uh, invent environmental sciences and Calpine. Uh, all right, so we need to do, we need to cast environmental sciences pre-combat, make sure that we make an extra treasure. Let's get the island. Uh,
Yeah, this deck, this deck is just bonkers. Definitely, definitely easily the best deck I've drafted so far in the format. And I wouldn't be surprised if we go, if we just win outright. You're doing it. You're doing it, my man. So we definitely want to kill the Pledge Mage now. So let's draw. Ooh, we can also just steal it. I like the idea of stealing it. So let's, uh, all right, let's go to main phase. Let's steal the Pledge Mage. Make a treasure. Make this unblockable. All right. All righty. All right, we're going to go 